Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Alton West. Today, my guests will be from Family Connection and Troop Bell, and I will have a guest on from the City of LaGrange. So stay tuned for those interviews in just a moment. Welcome to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I have on guests from the Family Connections, Executive Director Jack Eatman, and also Catherine Kostanik, who's an evaluator for Troop Bell. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, uh, Jack, I know that you and I have been in, uh, worked in the circuit for a while, and uh, was a lot of the grant funding opportunities here in Troop County, and, and uh, Family Connections is one of those, the umbrella for a lot of these uh, agencies. But today, we're here to talk about one that's near and dear to, uh, I think, a lot of parents, uh, Troop Bell. Uh, for our viewing audience that may not be familiar with Troop Bell, Jack, talk to us about what is Troop Bell. Well, first of all, thank you for having us on the show. I think okay. we were uh, on the show about three years ago we first started Troop Bell That's in right. our community. So uh, we appreciate being here. Troop Bell, Bell being an acronym for Building Early Learners for Life. Hmm. Troop Bell is an <coughs> early uh, education program. It's also a system of care that we put in place. Um, and have been in place for about three years now and uh, currently funded through the uh, Georgia Governor's Office for Children and Families with some support from uh, different agencies and organizations in the communities in the community here as well. Okay, all right. So basically again it's one of those early prevention things for uh, programs, I should say thing, programs for young people uh, and uh, Alfreda Hyman, the uh, executive director, right? of that mm -hmm. program and I met some of the other staff members do a wonderful job there. Absolutely. Um, um, and Catherine, you you are uh, one of the evaluators for Troop okay. Bell um, and I know that you want to talk a little bit about some of the statistical information that you've been able to extrapolate from uh, seeing the success of Troop Bell, but before we talk about that, why is it so important that there is early intervention in the learning capability of a child? Uh, well, the national data shows that about one in six children have a developmental delay and often these go undetected until the child enters kindergarten and by that time the child is already behind. Um, the delay could be in, in problem solving skills or communication skills or uh, motor skills or social and emotional development and so if a child uh, is behind when he enters school, he's always playing catch up and it impacts their ability to learn and grow as they progress in school and they just get further and further behind. Mm. Almost like the tortoise and the hare race. It is, it really is. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, uh, Jack, you mentioned earlier that um, uh, some of the funding opportunities and, and, and people that have helped with funding, how is this program funded? Well, actually, we in the first year, we were fully funded 100% uh, through the governor's office for children and families. And they have, a, in the year two, a 25% cash match, and currently in year three, a 50% cash match. So different uh, organizations and foundations in the community have really stepped up. Uh, I think they've seen this as an investment in our future for our children. and. Uh, Organizations like the Callaway Foundation have helped a lot, um, United Way of West Georgia, uh, City of LaGrange, of course, um, just uh, and various other private uh, donations as well. So we've done, uh, you know, we feel like we've done a good job meeting the cash match. We're hoping we go into year four, okay. starting in January, we'll have a hundred percent match. <laughs> okay, so we're, that's one of the reasons we're here today is to, to kind of let people in the community know that uh, we need your help and support to keep, continue to keep this thing going here in Troop County. Very good, very good. And, and Catherine, you were talking about uh, the early intervention. Mm -hmm. I just wanted for our viewing audience, those target ages, what, what ages are we looking at there? Well, Troop Bell targets children zero to five in um, a certain area of the city of LaGrange. Uh, we wish we could serve the entire county of, of families who would want to serve, but uh, Troop Bell uses the national parents as teachers model uh, so that parent educators go in the home and work with the parents to do activities and things with the children. But part of the initial process with the families is to 
uh, assess the children where they are developmentally in, in several different areas. And with the parents, the parent educator designs activities to be done with the, by the parents in the home with the children. And they get a, a, a monthly visitation uh, in the home with the parent educators. Okay, parent educators, and I met a couple of those uh, parent educators when I was down at the office there. Mm -hmm. And these are certified, trained individuals. Yes, they are. These are individuals that are just not going into the home, you know, reading a book to a child, various other yeah. things, but they're trained in specific backgrounds. That's right? correct. They're nationally certified by the National Parents as Teachers, went through, you know, rigorous training to be able to do this. And uh, it's, a, it's a very intense, type of job to do that home visitation, education, but it's very rewarding for the parents, the children, and the parent educators. Absolutely. And you know, you're saying you're going into the home too, so therefore you kind of, I guess, take a little bit of the frustration out of it or an embarrassment of it as well by yes. having the parent educator go into the home where they can work with not only the child, but also the parent as well. Is that correct? That's right. And that's why they use the parents as teachers. We're empowering parents to be the, their child's educator with the help of the parent educator who can uh, provide uh, learning activities and they have lesson plans and the parent might have three children and so they do three different lesson plans, yeah. one for each age of child. That's right, that's right. and it's something we don't think about a lot of times. Jack? I, I meant to mention uh, when I spoke last uh, that there's a lot of different families involved that are receiving these services. Uh, actually, uh, there are 13 Korean families yes. currently receiving Troop Bell services, and, and one of the uh, local corporations has uh, helped us significantly financially, Sewan America uh, uh, by name. Okay. I'd like to mention that. Very good, yeah. very good. And, and, and you know, Jack, I want you to also talk about a little bit about the importance of, you talked about 100% funding a moment ago, but the importance of continuing to have this funding, because I, I think that, you know, you said during the third year, uh, of course, as we look around the state and local government, everybody's looking for areas to cut, but why is it so important for this funding to be Well, continued? that's a great question, Alton, and, and really um, what we're going to see is that those kids that entered in, in, in during this period, two or three year period, when they graduate, that's that's we're really going to, going to see the the fruits of our labor with this. Uh, basically, with Catherine's kind of alluded to this, but uh, a child when they reach fourth grade, if they're not able to read, that, at that point they're uh, they're reading to learn from there on forward. So if they're not at that point, so it, it it's really just preparing them and preparing our community to have a better educated workforce. That's kind of the bottom line. That's and, right. and and people here in the community. Uh, in the county and the city, uh, l levels of government understand that there's a, this is a cost saver and, uh, and also uh, uh, an investment in, in the overall future of our community. Absolutely, because you say you're building an early learner for life. Exactly. Not just That's for right. that, right, for life there. Catherine, let me just ask the question that you were talking a little bit, you want to talk about how many children uh, that is currently being served by Troop Bell uh, have been identified with some type of learning uh, delay? Well, in the past uh, three years, we've served approximately 500 children, and some of them might have been in the same family, two or three children. Okay. Um, and over a quarter of them have a developmental delay in e at least one area, some of them in as many as five areas. Mm. Uh, and so what the parent educator does then is works with the family with lesson plans to help get that child where they should be at their age, plus, uh, we had a large percent of the children with undiagnosed hearing problems, vision problems, um, and so the parent educator connects them with doctors and special speech problems, mm -hmm. and have, they make referrals out to the community, existing community services, so that these children, once they reach kindergarten, have been you know assessed, intervention has occurred, They've seen the specialist. And imagine a child going into kindergarten who has a vision problem or a hearing problem that no one knows about. They're not gonna learn like our children would have learned who, did, who would not have had that problem. And so uh, it's estimated that it serves between, it saves between $30,000 to $100,000 per child on impact to the local community if you intervene early. Oh my goodness. That's, that's a, a lot of that's money. That's a significant savings there. It is. 30 to $100,000. And we're talking 125 children to date 
So that's quite a significant savings if we can help those children get on level where they are supposed to be so that they can learn with their peers instead of always being behind. That's right. I think, you know, it's so important, you know, I think we all realize this after we become older, how much and how important teachers were in, and are in our lives. You know, uh, again, I think I've said it before, they have your best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a learning delay and that's undiagnosed, there, then that just hinders things for that child because, you know, I, I wasn't one of the best students, but I always try to pay attention, but, you know, sometimes you would just kind of drift off. So you couple that with a hearing or vision or some other type of delay, then I'm sure it's just compounded. That's correct. So let me ask, uh, we talked about uh, the going to the homes, and I know that we want to try to have another segment where we can get Alfreda and maybe some of the parents that have been involved with Troop Bell to talk about some success stories. And I know, Catherine, you say that there are some success stories uh, that you would like to share. Can you just touch on one real quickly for um, us? We've actually discovered uh, two children that were severely delayed that ultimately were diagnosed with autism. And uh, we also have had uh, several children who have needed, like I've said, uh, like hearing aids, uh, glasses, um, and also we have children in the program that are not developmentally delayed as well because it's voluntary, uh, it doesn't target one specific type of family and uh, a lot of those children are ahead of the game. They're, okay. Because of this intervention, their assessments are showing they're a year ahead of a child normally their age or they've gained six months ahead. So just think of how successful those children That's are right, going to be yeah. when they hit kindergarten. They're going to be way ahead Absolutely. of the group. Absolutely. And so their success is on, on both ends of the spectrum. Well, very good. Well, Jack, I want to thank you and Catherine both for coming on and talking about Troop Bell. And again, we want to try to close out this segment talking and lead way into another segment where we can have some of the parents to come on and talk about how Troop Bell has really impacted their child's life. So thank both of you all for thank coming you. on this Thank you. We morning. appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right. Appreciate thank it. you. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back for more City Week in just a moment. Welcome back to City Week, ladies and gentlemen. Now I have on from the City of LaGrange, building official Bill Newman. Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Well, Bill, I know that you have been a part of the community, LaGrange community, for a very long time, and you are, are celebrating your seventh year anniversary with the City of LaGrange, correct? Yes, sir. That's right. Talk a little bit about your, <clears throat> some of your past experiences and talk about how you have uh, I guess moved up through the rankings there with the City of LaGrange for us. Okay. Uh, I've been in construction business, uh, actually spent 43 years as a general contractor and uh, doing commercial, mainly commercial work. And um, my training in uh, building construction goes way back, I guess all the way through my life, through military service and everything. But uh, I went to work for the city in uh, seven years ago, as you mentioned, and since that time I've uh, started out as a building inspector and uh, did a lot of the residential inspections. Went to commercial inspections, got some certifications, and have uh, since then worked up to plans examiner and now building official. Very good, absolutely. And you say 43 years of experience in the construction industry, uh, commercial and also residential. Correct? Yes, sir, that, mm -hmm. that's correct. And then let me ask you, how is that helping in your capacity now? Well, it helps tremendously. Um, I can't let that color the building code enforcement, which is sometimes as easy to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have a little too much mercy on people because I've been there before, <laughs> but um, we, it, it helps in knowing how things are supposed to be done. I've worked with architects and uh, engineers all my uh, professional career in uh, design build type work, mm -hmm. and uh, I've done a lot of surveying and drafting and uh, estimating and project managers so I let all that sort of uh, assist me when I need some information then I go to the code book. <laughs> and that's like the big... I yes guess. it is. It's, uh, code books uh, we, we have uh, cover everything from residential, commercial buildings and electrical plumbing, heating and air, mm -hmm. the, the whole uh, gamut of of individual uh, codes that we have to enforce and uh, each one is different and it's very difficult even for people who have a lot of experience. It's, uh, it's uh, very 
technical type information and sometimes it gets a little old but it's also interesting work. Yes it is you know and, and, and Mr. Bell I've seen you come through you know the city of LaGrange and do an outstanding job I've told you this you know a couple of times before you're very thorough uh, very uh, you know, I mean accurate and everything you know sometimes you know people go out and they'll look at things and of course you know it can there's always that wiggle room we yes, like to say yes. but uh, and i think you always do an outstanding job well, thank you. now let me just ask you in your build you you know as the building official you spoke a little bit about plan reviews mm -hmm. and things of that nature what are some of the other responsibilities that you carry well building official really covers everything uh below the community development director's level um, i'm responsible now for uh, the building department uh, building permits uh, plan review, and we then have to plan review, uh, approve permits to, to issue to the contractors or to the owners. And uh, we also do soil erosion control, floodplain ordinances, uh, just about everything wherever there's an unsafe condition in the city, unsanitary condition, uh, the citizens can call our department and either I or an inspector will uh, examine what the problem is and come up with a decision to, to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can issue, we can uh, issue summons uh, to go to municipal court if it gets down to that situation. Very rarely does. And, uh, but we cannot, we don't have any arrest or detention powers. So okay. ours is strictly a code enforcement and if we can't get somebody's attention in that manner, then we will, uh, issue a summons and let the judge explain it to them. Absolutely, you know, and that, and that helps the community as a whole. Uh, and again, you have the inspectors and the code officers down there to, to help with that yes, job sir. as well. That's true. Now let me, you touched on a lot of things. Like you say, we have a loaded area there. And I just want to dive in here and pick out a couple of points. Uh, I noticed sometimes, you know, as homeowners, we want to do maybe some minor work to our right. home, maybe add on a porch or add on a bathroom or just maybe replace a roof. Yes, sir. Uh, and sometimes, you know, people are unknowing whether or not they need a permit. Mm -hmm. Talk about some of the projects that have to be permitted. All right, sir. Um, about three years ago, the state of Georgia changed all of the licensing requirements for uh, general contractors generally and small contractors. They have licensed classes now for a residential contractor, a residential light commercial, and also general contractors. Mm -hmm. And it depends on what type of work you're doing uh, as to whether you can really permit it or not. The uh, repair work for a residence is generally the owner can come in and draw a permit for his repair work if they are not going to hire somebody to help them. Like if you have to hire a plumber or electrician to help you with your, then it, it goes past the repair stage. What this repair stage is usually is something like fixing a roof or doing some sheetrock work in your house on Saturday afternoon and that, that's classified as repair work and the owner can pull the permit and do the work. Okay. All right. And in some cases, uh, if it's the, the value of the work is down below $2,500 on a repair work, you don't even have to get a permit for it. Okay. Uh, it. Whenever you go into a situation where you're doing plumbing work, like plumbing piping or replacing a, uh, if you have a plumbing pipe under your house that's leaking and you're going under there to do some plumbing repair work, if you're going to do it yourself, you still have to get a permit for it. So okay. mm -hmm. it's, it's a very complicated procedure that all of us have to review and, uh, and re refresh our memory on it just about every day. And my best suggestion would be to anybody that's going to do work would be to just simply c pick up the phone and call us at City Hall Building uh, License Permit Department and talk to one of us and we'll tell you uh, not only if you have to have a permit, but how much it costs okay. to get one. Okay, because I know a lot of times, you know, as the inspectors are out riding around, I've, you know, you hear them over the radio and they'll call back and say, does this job yes, have sir. a permit? Yes. And sometimes our general public is just unaware yeah, of the right. fact that they have to have Well, a there are some items that we do not permit at all. Uh, mm -hmm. Being uh, roofing work, we don't permit. Okay. Unless you start doing uh, roof decking, that's a structural item. Uh, any kind of structural work that you do requires a permit. Uh, and there's uh, other things like painting and carpet work. Uh, 
in any kind of finishes we don't permit. Okay, all right, very good. And you know, and, and that's very good information. And again, go ahead and give them the number down at, at the office there, Bills, if anybody's listening might have a question about something. Yes, give them sir. Their uh, contact number. The phone number by department uh, which carries uh, building permits and licenses, which is the business licenses for any business that's going in, into LaGrange uh, is 706-883-2060. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will get you to the desk there and they can forward that call to a building inspector or to the building official to get the ball rolling on what you want and we'll take it as far as we have to. Uh, I have, I come out to a lot of houses, spent most of this uh, last week Mm -hmm. going out to houses to answer questions where people really weren't sure what they had to do or how to do it. We do not supervise construction work. Uh, I can't go out and stay a half a day helping That's somebody. Right. It, it's simply more of a code enforcement and trying to be courteous to citizens to keep them on the right track so that we don't have to go back later and tell them to change something because changes are expensive and that's what we try to avoid. That's right. You know, that was the point I was going to make. I, you asked, you know, to call in and, and I know that our guys have done courtesy inspections. Yes, sir. Uh, just to kind of give the, the property owner or homeowner uh, the best advice that they can. Mm -hmm. And they have to understand too, by permitting, it is to uh, to help prevent them from having, like you said, having to come back to make changes. And then there are some jobs that they have to have a licensed contractor to do. Yes, sir. And uh, sure. talk about that for us a little bit, Mr. Bill. Okay. Um, the licensed uh, work, uh, permitted work, and licensed contractors is required anytime you do structural work and you're getting into building an addition on the house. And it didn't used to be that way. Years ago, uh, if somebody simply wanted or desired a permit to build an addition on the house, they came to the city and bought one and went to work. But the state of Georgia changed all that because I think it came about mainly because of Katrina and other uh, bad experiences they had where a contractor would come into town and uh, demand 10, 15, 20 percent up front mm -hmm. to buy his materials and then leave town. And, mm. They got so many complaints uh, that the state of Georgia uh, Secretary of State office came up with the regulations on licensed contractors. And now that covers uh, like residential contractors only can do residential work and uh, they cannot do commercial work. Mm -hmm. And uh, residential like commercial license is one that can do up to 50,000 square feet of building up to three f floors high. And then a general contractor is the same old license that can, is unlimited in what they can do as long as they can get the necessary uh, building permit and they can pay the fees and have the personnel and, and, and licensed as a general contractor, they can do anything. Okay. And I know that we, and I know that you've been on cases here, even in our city where we've had homeowners that uh, didn't necessarily you know, get a licensed contractor and they've had some repercussions as yes, a result sir, that's of that. That's true. That, that's mm -hmm. the whole point of the, the exercise is to uh, make things safer and uh, especially structurally because some people don't know what structural is. You'll know, use two befores <laughs> to put a long rafter in a house and it's just not sufficient to do it. And, right. Uh, they think if they put new material in, that, that's all they have to do. But that, the whole point of the exercise really is to keep the citizens of LaGrange safe and uh, let them live in a safe and sanitary house. That's right. That's right. Well, Mr. Bill, you know, you do a great job. And, and I know there's a lot of things, as you stated earlier, we could, we could talk about the things that go yes, on in our is. department yes. until the end of the day. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, our time has escaped us. And yes. I want to thank you once again for coming on, just sharing this information. Yes, sir. Uh, and again, if, if any of the viewing audience want to contact you or anyone there in the building office there to kind of get a, additional information, give them that contact number one more time. Yes, sir. 706-883-26. Okay. And uh, I'll be glad to talk to anybody anytime about problems and sometimes people don't like my answer, but that, <laughs> that's, uh, that's part of it. You're going to be honest with them, that's yes, for sure. I'm, I'm going to be honest with them and we're going to help them do what needs to be done, do it safely. There you go. Well, Mr. Bill, I want to thank you again very much for coming on this thank morning. Thank you, sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back for more City Week in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for City Week this week. My guests have been from Family Connection, Jack Eatman, along with Katherine Kostanik, an evaluator for Troop Bell. 
They talked about the importance of early learning in Charles' life and also about the importance of continuing the funding for the Troop Bell program. I also had on from the city of LaGrange, Mr. Bill Newman, my building official. Mr. Bill talked about his experience and also those jobs that will require permits. And for all those viewing, viewers, if you have questions about things that need to be permitted, by all means, give them a call down at City Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed those interviews. And as always, I want to invite you back for more of City Week.